Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the second, yeah, second interview of the second interview week here at OC University. In case you guys are new, OC University is this improvement-focused OSU hub where our goal is to sort of bridge that gap between top players and the general community. And in keeping with that theme, this week we are doing a series of interviews with a bunch of different top players trying to dive deep into the topic of mind block. So again, right, this is the second interview of the week and joining me today is Bubble Man. Hello, hello. Oh. Hello, pleasure to be back. <laughs> yeah, you were here in the first interview week as well where we talked about nerve control, which I think you definitely, you, you of all people, I think have a lot to say. I think you are one of the people that's understood many different ideas about the game so very excited to get into this but just in case anyone is unfamiliar with you could you give a brief introduction as to who you are as a player and what people probably know you as well i am probably best known as a tournament player although i i don't like to put uh tags on what people know me as because um everyone else can well everyone can kind of know me as what they know me for i can play tech i can I've learned to play stamina recently. My aim was always historically really quite good back in 2016, 2017, and I would hope that hasn't changed. <laughs> so, yeah, I can kind of do anything. Um, yeah, mostly as a tournament player, though. Yeah, I, I think the um, yeah what people think of a lot probably when when they think of Bubble Man is just like very scary. You don't want to be in a multiplayer lobby against him. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, but, I, do, I do enjoy multiplayer yeah it's it's pretty cool um i like multiplayer too <laughs> um so specifically regarding mind block so probably something i want to touch on especially with you during this interview is mind block in relation specifically to tournament play um mm -hmm. but first to get a sort of broader scope on the topic uh could you talk a bit about your own understanding of what mind block is so from what I understand of mind block, it's when you just get too lazy to read things. And it's when you know when either you're not good enough or you're not focused enough to read a specific pattern that you're playing. And you kind of guess where the notes are. And, and a lot of the time you hit them, right? You kind of guess correctly a lot of the time, but you're still approximating. You're still saying, okay, it's over there. I'll move my cursor over there and hope I hit it because you know, it's a little bit too much effort for me right now. <laughs> and I think that's essentially what mind block is, is an extension of that. But you're so used to playing the pattern that your brain immediately thinks, oh, I don't need to read it. I know what that is. Right. Yeah, I think that um, is very similar to my own understanding of mind block as well, where basically you've e you already know how the pattern goes, right? So you don't really need to... Your your brain's like, yeah, I, I already know how this goes. I don't need to read it, really. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, as, as far as, like, what specifically could lead to mind block more easily, uh, do you think there's anything in particular that, yeah, leads to mind block happening? I think... And... Um... Yeah, I, I I think I'll go with this. Playing something when you're not good enough to play it is what leads to mind block. Because we've talked, or it, uh, throughout my time playing this game, a lot of people have gotten completely mind blocked on the big black, right? Right. They're, they're, they're really, really trying to push and push and push to pass this map that they they think, yeah, we can, we're ready for it, we can pass this. <laughs> They're really trying to push for it, and you know they're they're just sort of mashing through every pattern and tr and trying to to aim and and keep the HP below fail HP rather than hit all the patterns correctly. I think that's where mind block comes from, because I've I've even seen it in myself where I've gotten mind blocked on. Uh, especially mind blocked on maps that are like quote unquote the boss maps 
Right. You know which ones I'm talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, Freedom yeah. Dive, Image Material, uh, Furioso, um, all of the older older maps. Right, apparition Even the, as well. Cry Thunder. Nah, I guess so, yeah, because the Apparition streams aren't really... I've unmind blocked myself on those now. Oh, okay. We can talk about that. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was gonna, I was gonna lead into that a bit right, later, right. but yeah, all of the old boss maps that I think Cry Thunder is one of the big ones because all it is is um, we just cut streams that wind around themselves, but because you know you're trying to pass the map with as long of a combo as you you can that's sort of where you really run into the mind block. Yeah, I instead think... Of, instead of trying to hit everything correctly, you, you just kind of, okay, as long as I pass, whatever, who cares? Right, I, I think your understanding, or, yeah, what you said about um, playing something that's outside of your skill range being something that really leads to mind block um, is something that I definitely agree with. I think mind block part of it really comes down to like your brain just kind of shutting off um mm -hmm. and having a an understanding of a pattern that it's too hard for you will make you less likely to put in the effort to i guess keep your brain on um so it's like it's not even worth my effort to try solving it it's like um being given a math exam where you completely have no idea like where to even start then your brain's not going to be engaged with the problem at all right and if you're trying to tackle an oc map that's like way beyond your skill level then you're not going to engage your brain at all and but you'll remember that pattern as one where you couldn't play it right like it's outside of your skill range so then coming yeah. coming back to yeah, that exactly. same right coming back to that same map years later it's like oh i i remember this map it's just i I remember I just can't can't do this pattern. It's too hard for me. So you get to that same part of the map again, or you try it again, big block or or whatever um, typical yeah. map that you're mind blocked on, and your brain is still not engaged, even though your skill level is a lot higher. Um, so with that, yeah, I, I think there's definitely a discussion to be had about like what exactly leads to your brain shutting off, um, and sort of ways that you can think about the game differently to um to overcome that or circumvent that um but i guess just just to sort of define the boundaries here a little bit um and this is actually something that someone asked on the google forum as well um anonymous person asked how am i able to discern the difference between genuine mind block and something outside of my skill range I I think genuine mind block is when something moves inside of your skill range, whereas, uh, and it tends to be on the easiest stuff, right? You get mind blocked on, I mean, top players even today are mind blocked on the big black, right. when th there's eight star, nine star FCs flying around, right? Right. Uh, the end stream of the big black is is the notorious one, and I th I think. You could go as far as to say that it's a fundamental misunderstanding of how difficult or how to play the pattern that exists that means that you can't then sort of read the pattern as it should be read. You still have the, the not muscle memory, but memory of the pattern being really right. difficult, as you said, and you approach it as if it's that difficult. But because it, it, it's kind of the same thing of, as like you look up uh, when you're a five year old kid, you look up at your dresser and it's six foot tall. Oh, my <laughs> God, that's so tall. And then, you know, you grow up and you become a basketball player and you can <laughs> see the top, the dust on the top of the dresser. And you're like, well, you know, even even if I jumped when I was a kid, I couldn't reach the top of the dresser. So. It, it, it's like having that mental block in your head of, oh, I still can't reach the top of the dresser, <laughs> even though you're taller than it. You clearly can, right. Very mm. interesting example. I just, just on the spot, just don't... No, no, I, I, no. I, I, about it, nonsense sometimes. It illustrates a, a very nuanced perspective of mind block. Yeah. Um, no, I, I think that's a really good point because um, there, there's people, for example, uh, that have even told me in, in my experience that like, they are like, I 
can't like I spammed this map so much as a new player, and I do so much better on it with Hard Rock rather than Nomad, right? And they're yes. like, yeah, I yeah. can't even pass this map Nomad, and I get way less misses with Hard Rock. Um, it, it, do you have any insight on like, well, first of all, why um that would happen, but also I guess some ways to overcome that. I think I'm just gonna parrot exactly what I said. It's just that you've tried it too much and your brain is expecting it to be really really difficult and you your reading gets lazy you approach it even subconsciously as if it's too hard for you still when it isn't too hard for you still it's it's absolutely within your skill range i think and i've done this as well 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 i've started doing this very consciously and very um uh what's the word like purposefully which isn't the word i was looking De for deliberately will do know. deliberately yeah with the apparition end streams um I le actually euphoria the euphoria jumps i am absolutely completely mind blocked on and i think it's still a slight deficit in skill for me where they're not so easy that i can hit them every time and that's sh that sure that's fine uh, but it's the sense of I am definitely mind blocked on them because I hit so or I, I miss so many slider heads and the way to combat that sort of mind block is by learning to reread the map entirely as in going into the editor and slowly scrolling through every pattern and looking at every pattern and comparing it to what you thought it was so, for example, in the um, in the jump section of Euphoria, there's a few patterns that I didn't realize were symmetrical. And they are. They're symmetrical. They're the same on each side of the screen. Uh, there's a few patterns that I didn't realize, you know, a back and forth, like a zigzag type um, back and forth, where one of the, uh, uh, well, one of the fourths is uh, longer than the other. One of them shortens oh. and then move somewhere that I, I didn't realize the angle was acute and not obtuse. So, yeah, the, the, it's lazy reading. It's um, misinformed reading almost, where you've played it enough when your reading wasn't good enough to read it that now you have these misconceptions even about the map and about the patterns inside it that you play to and aren't correct basically oh right yeah i, I think um yeah, going in the editor like you mentioned is probably one of the best things you can do because i i think there, there's this trend or like predictable sort of pattern of getting mind blocked where uh your brain shuts off right i think that's something we've sort of established yeah. already yeah, yeah, yeah. and so every time you play that pattern in the actual map while you're playing your brain shuts off to the point where like you can't even tell how you missed um and you most certainly can't tell um like how the pattern is actually supposed to go um so mm -hmm. really being able to dissect that and look in the editor um and yeah work like object by object and, and bit by bit and try to notice things that you weren't able to notice live while you're actually playing the map um yeah, so is is that something that you've had your own success with? Um, I guess on on I've, maps other I've, than yeah, other than Euphoria. Because I I, I want to talk about the apparition end streams that you were talking about, or is that the same concept that you applied? It is the same concept. I just um, was learning to read them. Something a, a little tidbit Woey gave me, which uh, has stuck by me, is there are different ways to read patterns. Like, you could read a triangle as one, two, three for the, the three corners of the triangle, or you can read it one, two for the first jump, and then three entirely separately. So you, you focus on moving from one to the two in a straight line, and then to the three, which is, you know, it's not from two to three, it's almost from two to one. Right. And then on to whatever comes next, right? Right. And... um. Same thing with squares. You can read squares in a few different ways. If you, if you go from, say, 
top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left as one, two, three, four. It, you could go one, two, three, four. So across the screen in a line, and then across the screen in a line the other way. Right. So or effectively two separate go, one twos. Yes. Or you can go one, two, three as like a jump, a really wide angle triangle. Right. And then four as something completely separate. A lot of, because a lot of people miss out the three because they hit one, two, and then they look at where the square ends because they kind of guess where the three is. And there's, an, I suppose, another one where you hit the first one, the first circle, and then go two, three, four as its own right angle triangle. So, there, yeah, there's a lot of different ways to read the same pattern. You could even go one and then use the triangle example of one, two, the first, the first jump in the triangle. Right. And then the third one entire or fourth one entirely separately. Just, there's just so many different mental cues that you can take. And I think this entirely branches into a different thing, but still on the topic of mind block is if you're good at reading, you're good at being able to pick out those patterns and apply them quickly. Yeah. I think breaking down, um, yeah, just like you said, breaking down, more complex patterns into subsections, I guess. Um, and mm -hmm. very, be, I think the, the word that's coming to mind is like micro focusing rather than trying to focus guess, on everything yeah. at once. You give yourself little things to micro focus on, and it you basically just have like higher acuity or like higher, or like a more accurate understanding of how each little bit of the pattern is supposed to be played. Um, so mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that is something that GN also mentioned, um, the whole breaking things down. But what's interesting, and, and I want to ask you about this, is that neither of you brought up looking at each individual circle. You only mentioned, you know, making like one, two, and then another one, two on a square, for example, and breaking patterns down mm -hmm. like that. But what exactly are your thoughts on, because it, it's, it's not uncommon advice, right? You know, look at each individual circle. Yeah. So, yeah, what do you think about that? I, I, I do that as there's a lot of things going on when i'm taking stuff in and reading that i think i think here the process that goes on inside my head because i can't really go back and analyze what i've been thinking about i get into a flow state and it's entirely based off what i've built in practice you know so i've practiced looking at every circle and making sure i can break down these patterns and then it becomes, I think I said in the last interview, and I'll say again, it's conscious practice turning into unconscious um, performance. Right. So when I'm when I'm consciously practicing, I'm or the process that I'm making is I'm dividing everything up into these uh, micro patterns, I suppose you could call them, and then I'm looking at every circle to make sure that I'm hitting each one individually. So I'm planning oh. out a path. I'm planning out a path that my cursor has to take, and then I'm executing it. So there's sort of a layer even under the whole breaking patterns down into yeah. simpler bits, and then within each, so basically breaking down a pattern into like distinct simple chunks, and then even within that chunk, you focus on sort of each individual circle and. And yeah, so essentially I'm just making sure that I'm executing what I've thought I need to do correctly. So I'm I'm when I'm reading I'm taking in the information and I'm going okay, square and this square maybe I'll read as 1 2 3 4 because of where it's placed on the screen. So for something like that I'm going to guess top right or bottom left corner and then the 4 leads into the center of the screen somewhere. So okay. After I've broke that pattern down in my own head, and this this just this just happens, right? Right. Um, I then think, okay, hit the one, hit the two, move in a line to the three, hit the four. Okay, okay, I see. So, if you know, if I'm breaking a square down into two one two jumps, so one two one two, I'll I'll think, okay, hit the one move in a line to the two, hit the three, move in a line to the four. 
Right. And yeah. I'll make sure that I'm um, make sure that I'm doing that properly. I see. Yeah. I think that that's actually very similar to, um, actually my understanding of, I guess chunking down patterns is I, I sort of see it mm. as like for, for each individual chunk, there's like a three step process, so to speak. There is um, or at, at least sort of my understanding, and and I'd like to get your thoughts on this as well. So, for each, um, so let's say. Uh, so actually, j just to have it a bit more complex, let's say there's like a hexagon pattern um, that's sort of very linear, and um, you break it down into um, one, one, two, three, and then another one, two, three. Um, yeah. So, so you have two separate chunks of, of three notes, and my understanding is like of yeah. So basically, this three-step process. The first step is to make sure you get the first note of each chunk like landed um like focus your attention on landing the first note of each chunk um the second step is to focus only on i guess like following through the rest of the chunk so in that case that would be like mm -hmm. moving to the two and the three in that little triangle section um yeah. and then the third step is to focus then shift your focus to the transition between the end of that chunk and the start of the next one basically um yeah i'd so, say that fits with um my own sort of uh, m uh approach to stuff where I'm, I'm making sure i hit the first note and interestingly after that my second step is hitting sure making sure i hit the last note oh, because okay. almost like the transition or, or between the first and the last note almost plays itself if you yeah. know where you're starting and ending i agree um yeah um, and, I, and if did if not Ian talk about uh okay so, go on. so I, I do want to add like if if yeah. the bit between the first note and the last note of your chunk doesn't really play itself, then your chunk is probably too big, I would say. You can break it down even more. Um, yeah. Yes, all. yeah, yeah, yeah. And usually on on subsequent plays, you, you learn to read a pattern, and then you go, oh, well, that didn't work as well as I wanted it to. I'll read it this way next time. Right. You can You can adjust and... That's why playing a map all the way through the first time you play it in every session is important, I think. For for the sake of, I guess, trial and error of trying different I, ways yeah, to... Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. The, uh, you were asking something about GN's interview, I think? Oh, yeah. Did he say anything about breaking streams down? On, no. And how... No, he didn't. He he gave me an interesting bit of advice about breaking streams down into even note chunks. You know how you have focal points on a stream of uh, the the top of a curve or where a direction changes right. or where there's a, a corner in a curve or a corner in a stream. Right. Um, he gave me the bit of advice, and I don't I don't think I apply it today but it still sits in the back of my mind for if I need to use it, that breaking stuff down into four note and eight note and even sometimes two note chunks inside that stream is a good way of going about it. So you're hitting the first four notes. You're looking at the start and the end of that section. You're hitting the next four notes. You're hit looking at the start and the end of that section and so on and so on through the stream. Right. Um, so basically chunking... Chunking the stream. Yeah, chunking streams. I think Zilva gave me the same sort of um, uh, like focal points, and this was this was when I was seeking that sort of advice on learning to aim streams. Right, I was absolutely terrible at streams in um, 2017, 2018 because my aim was bad and my tapping technique was absolutely terrible. So. Um, there was all I was going around top players asking, you know, how do you read streams? How do you read streams? And I would say, you know, I got a lot of useful information and a lot of um, uh, what, uh, things that I could try to see if they work. And if they didn't, then that's fine. It's it's a valid method, but it's not the one for me, you know? Right. So, yeah, um, that's a good way of, and I, that, again, Euphoria end streams, 
that helped me break it down into, okay, there's a chunk of eight. Oh, but then it changes in spacing. I see now. Oh, there's a chunk of four, and then it spaces slower, and then it spaces wider, spaces shorter. Yeah, those those sorts of, um, you know, techniques will help to just blow away mind block because, of course, when you're reading streams and you get lazy on streams, you aim them as if either they're the same spacing or the curves are, like, shallower than they are. And, and in fact, they're quite steep and you're just completely misaiming. Or you move too fast over them thinking, you, you know, you're not aiming fast enough. There's, there's just a lot to unpack and there's a lot of different ways of approaching the same thing. Uh, like, to reiterate that point from before. Right, and I, I think, um, especially in, in that case, um, or in that regard with streams, is I think really where watching your own replay has a lot of value. Um, mm -hmm. Analyzing your own replay too, because especially when you're playing a stream, there's so much going on, um, and so much you sort of have to coordinate between your hands that you don't yeah. always have enough focus to, like, by the time you miss, you sometimes don't even process that you miss until, like, it's yeah. it's way past you, and by that point, um, you sometimes have no idea how exactly you messed up. Uh, clearly, you missed. Maybe you started note locking, um, but it's hard to exactly pinpoint what happened. And I think what mm -hmm. can lead to mind block a lot of the times is just not taking that you know, t not taking a moment to step back, maybe watch your replay, maybe look in the editor, um, and figure out what exactly you're doing wrong. Because uh, sometimes, and sometimes I don't even watch my own replay, um, but I'll make a practice difficulty and just play over and over again. And yeah, if, then without even watching my replay, I will see, like, am I missing the same note every time? Um, yeah, like, I try to FC yeah, my I've practice done difficulty. I've done that before. Right. Um, so you, you try to FC your practice dev, and then when you miss something, you sort of try focusing on it again the next run. Obviously, it's, it's only like a 10 second difficulty or something like that. So, um, but if you end up missing the same thing over and over again, then that very clearly sort of isolates the thing that, that you're messing up. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and, and Gian did also mention this about, about practice difficulties and, and the value that that can have. Um, so, uh, yeah, definitely. I, I think to to sort of summarize so far, because a lot of a lot of valuable insights and tips so far. I think um, focus so far has been a really big thing um, in regards to processing patterns properly, and um, I guess really taking a step back, right? Um, when you start missing on the same thing, rather than trying to brute force, because um, I guess there's sort of two routes that you can take when you start missing the same thing is mm. either you you know take a moment to analyze that gameplay or you just feel you sort of make this understanding of the pattern in your head that it's just too hard for you um i'm not sure maybe you know you know what i'm talking about yeah. and you can find a better way to uh, yeah. word that um, um, no, I don't think I could word that much better. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I do have a point about skins. I don't know if skins have been talked about, but yeah, there's I'll... two skins I have. I had my base skin, which has a noticeable cursor, but it's, it's not like stand out. The only thing you see on the screen and it has very visible hit circles so that I can, I can track my cursor. I can track my hit circles around the screen. It doesn't have any follow points, so I kind of have to make the connections myself, which I think aids reading even rather than um, uh, Just... making it falter. Right. But my secondary skin was one that Happy Stick himself remixed of my skin. He added a very, very vibrant green cursor. And I'm sure you know which one I'm talking about right. because Exarch plays with it. Yep. I don't think he plays with my skin, but he uses that cursor. And that entirely just kind of makes me approach everything in a different way because instead of focusing on the hit circles, the relation between them, and then trying to make my cursor move in that 
way, I'm so much more focused on how my cursor is moving and, and where, it's, where it's actually going and far less focused on where the hit circles are, although I'm still reading them, of course. Right. I'm, I'm much more, I'm, uh, instead of aiming one circle to the next, I'm much more just making shapes with my cursor, if you know what I mean. Oh, okay, and yeah, I, yeah. I do that. I do tend to do that anyway. I, I do tend to track my cursor and uh, make sure I'm making the correct shape. But with that very vibrant green cursor, it's um, very well. It's very apparent the shape I'm making with it. And if that shape is wrong or looks wrong, then there's there's something off there. But yeah, I I apply that skin. If I notice I'm getting especially mind blocked on something. Uh, I can't really do it with 10.3 stuff because the skin doesn't work for it. Oh. <laughs> but if I'm getting especially mind blocked on a readable approach rate with that skin, I, I I switch to that skin and I make sure my cursor is going where I think it's going. You know, right. And if it you know if it's, if it's straying somewhere or uh, most of the time it it just I don't make the miss because I'm actually focused on where my cursor is going rather than where the hit circles are. And and then my cursor just kind of makes uh, kind of the shape that I think is there. Yeah, I think having your cursor be so visible um, does make it a lot easier to um, point out or, or sort of compare your understanding of the pattern to what you actually ended up playing. Um, and that mm. can help a lot, especially uh, in trying to figure out what exactly just happened. Like you miss, sometimes you have no idea why. Um, you switch to a skin where maybe your cursor stands out a little bit or something in your visual stands out a bit more so that right after you miss, you can shift your focus to that miss and, and really look back on um, where your cursor ended up being, for example. Um, mm -hmm. I think those really long cursor trails, for example, that like stay on for like a, one or two seconds, um, Yeah, those help a lot for... Uh, in in my opinion, especially for watching your own replays, um, sometimes yes, yeah, yeah. in in my experience, it can be tricky to use curses like that um, for actual gameplay. Because I mean, it, it's personal preference, obviously, but because um, not everyone experiences this. But to some people, it can be pretty distracting uh, when you play. But um, yeah, I, I think hopefully my point is clear with that. Like having your cursor be very um, visible. Um, and s something else, actually, because that ties in the whole concept of different kinds of cursors. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw Zilver's um, discussion video on like those different kinds of cursors. Um, where I did, and I I thought that was very um, anecdotal. All right, I'll, I'll try to summarize it before we talk about it, just in case anyone doesn't know. But yeah, go ahead. Um, so basically, the idea is. Um, there's two you can you can group cursors or, or skin elements in general into like two different categories um, but for cursors in particular there's sort of lighter feeling lighter colored cursors um, that almost feel a bit faster um, they don't really get in your way as much um, and on the contrary there are heavier cursors that are more dark colors and they they stand out a lot more um, and you can keep track of them a bit more easily. And um, just, I, I think the, the main takeaway from that video that Silver was trying to get across is just understanding the difference between the two and experimenting with them to see if a certain kinds of, kind of cursor helps you more for a certain kind of map. Um, but he, what mm -hmm. he mentioned in his own experience is that lighter cursors tend to help him a lot more when something requires more speed, whereas heavier cursors that are that stand out a bit more and are a bit easier to keep track of um, are a bit more helpful for things like aim control, smaller CS, and things like that. But especially I... in re in regards to mind block. Yeah, do you, do you want to talk about that? I was going to say, I think that's very anecdotal because I've seen players with lighter colored cursors that don't really follow that trend. They track their cursors and... There's also the argument that you could just make a really dark skin and have a bright cursor that can stand out against those darker colors, which right. essentially is what Happy Stick did with that skin. 
the cursor is really bright. It, it, sure, it's green, but I could replace that with a bright blue cursor, and it would still be incredibly trackable across the screen and across my across those hit circles. I do agree that yes, you different cursor types are tracked in different ways and suit being tracked in different ways. But I play with a yellow cursor and I track my cursor entirely. It's about as readable to me as the red cursor was. Yeah. So, uh, in fact, more so because I I can place it better on my screen, which is why, it, of course, I changed to it in the first place. Right, and I think um, regarding different colored cursors, and this is something that GN mentioned as well, is that like over time, your I guess you will get accustomed to seeing your cursor on the screen, and you will notice it a bit less like i guess having yes. no novelty in your cursor color or um in other words ch just changing your cursor every now and then changing the color changing something like that will make it stand out a bit more just because you're not used to your cur cursor being that way and yeah. with that you'll you'll notice it a bit better and it'll be easier to keep track of where you are in the map maybe like the mistakes that you're making misses that you Otherwise, would have no idea, like, why in the world did I miss in the first place? But if you're able to track your cursor a bit better, then it makes it a lot easier to not have that happen to you. Yeah. I, uh, color theory is really interesting to do with skins and contrasting colors and complementary colors. And it's it, it surprises me sometimes how a lot of skins blend together all the assets just kind of blend together right in my skin i've kind of taken an approach of everything has a different section of the color wheel where repeat sliders and or repeats on my repeat sliders and my slider ticks are red my cursor also used to be red but now it's yellow so we've got the warm color red that stands out we've got the bright warm color yellow which stands out against the blue, green, and purple, which are on my hit circles, which are cold colors. So oh, there's all this contrast in going on, and there's all this information that it's conveying. Say, if if you notice there is red, it's either a slider tick or a uh, reverse slider. So pay attention. You need to focus on whatever that slider is. If you see blue, green, purple, it's a hit circle. You need to look at it, make sure you know where it is and where it is in relation to the other hit circles. If you see yellow, it's um, your cursor, and, <laughs> and that is where your cursor is, wherever you, you know, need it. And I think, interestingly, the cursor in Happy Stick skin is green, and he's removed my green combo color and made it red. Oh, so that's right. That's quite... That's quite funny. Um, I've I've experienced that too. When I change my cursor, sometimes um, I end up changing one of the combo colors as well because mm. that combo color that's the same color as your cursor will feel very strange compared to the rest of them. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, yeah, but just I guess because that that's actually a really good point. I think basically like using colors to like better convey the information of what you're supposed to be paying attention to um yeah. right when you're playing um but i guess just so that everyone is on the same page in um connecting this to mind block and and solving mind block i think it th um this in particular really comes down to figuring out the mistakes that you're making more easily right and yes. especially during gameplay and um reading the patterns in a more clear way so that you don't fall into these pits of not focusing correctly, not reading the pattern correctly, or like shutting your brain off. Um, it it just gives you multiple. It's kind of like tr trying to learn something new and have it explained to you the same exact way ten times, or have it explained ten different ways once. Basically, um, you will have a much clearer understanding if you take in information different ways. Basically, and color. We're basically using color in this case, um, as one of the ten. Well, for, for example, yeah, one one of the many different ways that you take in the information of the map. Um, but yeah, any anything that you want to add to that regarding mind block in yeah. particular? I mean, 
but that's that's also why just switching your skin in the moment even if even if you it's a very reactionary thing of okay maybe this skin will help me read it better it's different information that you need to take in so if you're used to taking in the information of a or this this square that your mind blocked on being in the blue combo color if you switch your skin and it's a different combo color and you have to take in that information in a different way it sort of almost jogs your brain into taking in the information instead of guessing and uh, approximating again because it, it thinks it already has the information what that reminds me of is um yeah so like switching your skin sometimes in, in a bout of frustration almost sometimes mm -hmm. i i think um mm -hmm. there's there's a term to be coined here i think i'm gonna call it like tilt skins you, you, you know what i'm talking about <laughs> tilt skinning like you have yeah, the skins I, that you I know. you only switch to when a, you're um... tilted <laughs> like i i think a perfect I have example a video on my youtube channel hold on okay go on go ahead right um so box box for example when he plays osu so i think his typical i think he uses the white white cat skin um with a yellow cursor or something and yeah. then whenever he's really grinding out a map and um like getting frustrated or, or like not getting the fc he'll switch to a skin that's the same exact skin but um with an angry emoji as the cursor instead of the yellow one um so it's just like this red circle basically <laughs> with a little angry face um and then he'll he'll uh, use that. Well, yeah, I I know that one. I know that one. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, tilt skin. Um, I I feel yeah. like everyone has one. Um, or remember maybe not. One but... particular day, one one particular day, way 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 back in the distant past, I got really really annoyed that I was having a bad day. Um, twenty second of October, twenty fifteen. <laughs> wow. And um, wow. I made this skin. It had really thin, um, really thin hit circles. It had a really thin, like, uh, hit circle overlay, which was the colored bit. It had different numbers than I was used to. It was just entirely, like, I copied and pasted a load of different assets around. And then, for some reason, I just was, was tabbing through my maps, and I got my first pass on Garvin's remote control with double time, with the skin, just entirely at random. Oh my god. I found the video. It's a. I, I don't have this skin. This skin was literally just a um. A, a tilt skin, because <laughs> I just made it on the spot because I wanted to, to see if it worked or not. And that's uh, funny. I, I don't know. It just made me process the information differently, and it helped me pass. I think. Um. Yeah. So the, the, I, I guess just as an aside, those of you listening on YouTube, I'll link. That video that Bubbleman's mentioning in the description, and I'll I'll also link the Zilver video on light and heavy yeah. cursors in case you want to look at that as well. So, um, yeah, but I think, um, in terms of, and I mean, even even these interviews, everything I and Habib have said today has to be taken with a very slight pinch of salt because everyone's human and everyone's different. I'm sure you'd agree. Yeah, uh, I, I think taking, you know, you know, taking in as much information about a topic as you can is really good. And um, having that information at your disposal, if you ever need to use it, is similarly just second to none. Knowledge is the main knowledge. Knowledge is power. <laughs> no, nah, there's a different quote, but I'll go with that one. I, I think yeah, um... it's one good way to oh. put it is we're we're not necessarily um your ad advisors or, or i guess your your doctors we're not health professionals so to speak um mm -hmm. we're more of um we're like we're we're professing information professors um we're, we're just well, yeah. giving you information and um i guess tidbits and and anecdotes and um personal experiences of of different players and really the the value that's supposed to come out of that is just having a broader perspective on what's out there and things that you can try to apply to your own personal situation and, and see if it works for you or not so yeah because uh, because not everything will work not not everything we tell you works for us will work for you and at the same time 
some of the things that we're saying didn't work for us will work for you and that's kind of the, the the beauty of i suppose being human and having different approaches being built differently and and yeah it's 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 nice to have all these different points of view and perspectives and to be able to come together and discuss and uh, just to kind of put all the information out there that people can pick and choose from yeah and i i think in in that regard i want to emphasize a point that actually Zilver made this point as well in his same video about you know light and heavy cursors is um he's he wasn't giving his own experiences as as a sort of end-all be-all right of like how mm -hmm. how these cursors work because he in his specific instance right he mentioned that light cursors help with high bpm and heavy cursors help with small cs and things like that but his point really is that like you know that there might be some people who experience the opposite effect um so yeah the the point is not to tell you what works and what doesn't work um the the point is to tell you what is possible right so that you can figure out for yourself what works and what doesn't because it's it's very personal um and i think that's that's kind of the beauty of the game in a way um is i, I don't know this is a bit of an aside but any i, I think um uh, a wonderful thing about osu is that there's I think a lot of games sort of have this meta that you have to follow um, that, you know, you can like, you have to sort of keep up with like playing, playing in a certain way yeah. to, to find success. Um, and in Osu, it's, it's more of like, there's, there's one goal and you can go about it like however you want, basically. Um, God, can you, can you imagine a meta where you had to measure the distance between the between your height of grip on the pen and the tip of the pen and then you had to measure the <laughs> size of your hands and the size of like uh, the ratio of the size of your hand finger to palm <laughs> compared to the base of your finger to palm and then you had to convert that into uh, put that into a calculator online and it'll generate the perfect tablet area for you <laughs> And that's the area you have to use because it is the best area and you will reach every circle and click every circle. How boring would that be? That would be like, that would, that would mean I could never play full area. And I like playing full area. Right. I enjoyed that. <laughs> I think the whole bit about um, play more is more of, it, it's, it's to get you to find your own solutions because at the end of the day with something as preference based as osu i think it that that is definitely a, a key element there um so yeah well said though for sure um i think i that i do want just to be boring that, that would be boring um you must use red switches yeah i, I think circa 2015 that, that's also i think something that keeps people engaged with the game for so long is like you can try different methods of finding success as well like there's there's people mm -hmm. who I, I i can't remember specific names but you know former top players who would take a break from the game and then when they come back they like completely switch their play style like they go from tablet to mouse and they switch from index single tap to middle single tap or or something like that and um just experiencing the game in a whole new way and still trying to seek those same successes and and improve um, so cool game <laughs> this is pretty awesome i love this game <laughs> uh, i do want to make time for viewer questions um yeah those of you listening in the discord server there is a text thread called live chat um it is attached to the general channel and you can drop your questions in there um so yeah we'll we'll make time for a couple questions if you want to mention any specific instances that you might have about mind block or bounce ideas at us um we'll, we'll try to keep it more focused on mind block but um if you so what we'll do is if you see a question that you also think is good to be asked if you could react to it with a thumbs up emoji so that we know what people want asked um that will help us out but while questions come in um bubble man do you have any last tidbits or um key takeaways i guess from mind block understanding mind block conquering mind block anything of that sort i suppose key takeaway is your 
reading it or, or you're misinformed in how you're reading a pattern and you need to go back and properly study it again or you need to play the map as if you're playing it for the first time again and read every circle. Uh, that's that's basically what mind block is, is a misinformation that is held. Okay, easier said than done though. Do you have any tips for oh, of course. sort of forgetting the map and, and reading it as if it's the first time again? Other than skins, I think we've we've already uh, beaten that that route down. Yeah, other 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 than skins, no. It's just a um it, it's an acceptance you need to make of okay, I can't I've I've completely messed up this map. I need to just <laughs> play it and read it again because I know nothing about this map. It, it's it's almost a mental switch you have to flip to say, okay, back to basics, back to square one. Uh d just do, you know, do it again. Do over. All right. I, I think, um, yeah, because th this actually t ties in perfectly to the first question from live chat from Multi, who asks, uh, do you think taking a break from a map will help with mind block? Only if you then come back to the map and reread it properly. As in, if, if you're retrying and retrying and retrying, and it's a very um, local, no very it's just happened that that moment you've just got that my that mind block that moment oh like fresh um, basically fresh yeah Benign. it's a fresh mind block <laughs> yes taking a break can help but if it's if it's a mind block that you've had for months and years then no god it, <laughs> I, as i would know it just doesn't work yeah, I, I think in that case um even beyond skins, as much as, as they help, I think the the whole bit about um, breaking patterns down in new ways and I guess finding novel or new ways to like mm -hmm. process the same pattern in a different way um, can can help a lot to clear off, I guess, misunderstandings that you make when trying to read a map. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so a question that came in from Mid Midone, I think, hopefully said that right. Does cutting cut streams, or does reading cut streams as individual parts, um, there, is that a viable way to play them? So I guess sort of chunking cut streams. The advice that was given to me when I was learning to play cut streams or asking and seeking advice on how to play them was read the last note of every cut, be that the second note where there's doubles, uh, where it's uh, four note cut streams, read the four, then the eight, then, well, probably the four or, or the 12, <laughs> if it's still the same combo. Right. Always the last note, make sure you've hit that and then move on to the next stack, I suppose. Yeah, and I, I think um, the something I, I usually advise people when it comes to chunking patterns, right? When it, where I mentioned that sort of three step process where the third step is to mm -hmm. really focus on landing that transition from the end of the first chunk to the start of the next one um i think really mastering that is where mastery of cut streams comes in as well um yeah. because oftentimes when you mess up a cut stream it's because you sort of got lazy you maybe left the first cut section too early or yeah um, Exactly. Or something like that. Or you started the next section too late. So focusing on hitting the last note of each cut, like you said, and then uh, sticking the landing on the next, the start of the next cut as well. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think is really key, especially for cut streams. So, um, yeah, okay. Let's see. Uh, another question. This comes from Smith. Is it viable to try to solve mind block by playing slowed down versions of the map or pattern to get a better idea on how exactly to read them? Yeah, I do that all the time. That's that's something I, I go for all the time. And even when I'm just learning a map with Corsace last year, you remember Beyond Corsace? I oh, can't yeah. Remember, I just remember the diff name of it. I don't remember the uh, Event Horizon. actual name of the map. That's it, Event Horizon. <laughs> to actually be able to read that, because that was very difficult. Like all of the overlaps and the the rhythms, I had to play it with half time first, and learn how the rhythms went and learn how the song went with half time, 
and then I moved to full speed, and oh. I could. I found that I increased from maybe ninety combo max to a potential FC on the map. You just, just by playing it half time first. I did the same thing. You just reminded me. Yeah, when I was learning that yeah. map, I I made sure I got like one or two locals. Like played it all the way through with half time. Um, yeah. So. Um, it's it, useful. It, it, it gives you works. so much more time to process every pattern. Right. And and make sure you've read every pattern properly. And it, it instead of getting lazy, because I know going from DT back to Nomad to practice a map for DT pools, you um like you have the time to read them, but if you then get lazy and think, okay, if I can really relaxed aim this on Nomad, I can probably aim it on DT. And and that's I suppose a good way of approaching stuff, but you still need the reading and accurately recognizing where everything is in relation to everything else. It doesn't work if you get lazy, basically, and that's what mind block is, is lazy reading. So right. lazy reading on no mod or <laughs> half time just won't work. Yeah, I remember I, I think Hvic um had this habit of always playing a map no mod first, even if it was a pretty simple DT farm map mm. for him um yeah actually um on the topic of old players this is something i was going to ask you is you um and this is sort of about like focusing on on certain things in the map um but i remember there was a time where you were exploring like the reading styles of old players um those that grew up with the old default skin um you know what i'm yeah. talking about um I can, can you talk about I, that i remember yeah, I remember what you're talking about now. I completely forgot I did that. I went back and I used the default skin and 0% background dim. I don't think it really did anything for me <laughs> in the sense of like, it was it was an interesting experiment and it made me really work to pick out where the notes are and what they were. But it died. I don't think it did anything for me. I think the same effect could have been... Um, uh, what well, produced just by playing normally and focusing and really picking out where notes are. Yeah, I, I think it the, was interesting. Though. The main idea that you had, especially, is like because the, the cursor is so big, but more importantly, the three hundreds um, were not invisible. First of all, but they were so large and not transparent that they were basically the they were even bigger than the actual hit circle. So you hit a three hundred, and it yeah. just makes a big circle on your screen, um, and because of that you have to like you don't have time to read a note um after hitting a 300 i guess because it might get covered so you mm -hmm. have to really read ahead and um focus a lot more on the circles than where your cursor is basically i, I think it was it was more about like shifting your focus on to the circles rather than the cursor something like that yeah right but i i, I don't think it did much if anything for me though so yeah right um but yeah just a thought experiment something that has been explored in the past um okay, so someone asked uh, and this is probably a good question to help us summarize what we've discussed so far um but tron plays asked what advice can you give to fix lazy reading um so i i think mm. uh that whole idea of micro focusing on specific bits of a map um i think is very helpful to and and, and that, that basically plays into the idea of chunking right um yeah i think what's very valuable with that is that it always gives you something to be attentive to rather than like when when you play an entire map it's sometimes easy to just be like okay um i i can play this i can kind of turn my brain off and, and not really pay much attention um and that's when random misses tend to happen. But if you give yourself something deliberate to focus on, um, and in this case, that being, you know, um, chunking, right? Um, so that you, yeah, it, it forces you to not be lazy, I think, is, is one thing. Mm. But, um, it does. What I tend to do, I notice I have lazy reading sometimes. I log on, I do my warm up, I I make sure my wrists and my hands are stretched and warm and ready to play, 
And then sometimes I'm I'm playing and I'm just moving too soon or I'm moving too late or or I'm misaiming and I'm being really lazy about stuff. And yeah, I, I most of my misses are just down to me being lazy at reading because my aim is there, my aim mechanics are present, my stream tapping mechanics are present. It's all to do with me misreading stuff and being lazy and not looking properly at things. So the way, and especially in on maps that I know are well, well within my skill range, I um, I actually like take a step back for a second and go and play f low star rating stuff that on on lower approach rates. The reason for that is you have to read so far ahead that that chunking method you described comes in completely handy and almost necessary because you have to be aware of how your cursor is moving on low approach rates. Whereas on high approach rates, you can kind of just react to stuff. The higher the approach rate gets, the more of a reaction it is that right. you're, you're reading things because the density is really low. But with the density being really high, you have to plan out how to move and execute that movement. Yeah, I think like on, on higher ARs, the map is kind of chunked for you, pretty much. Um, yeah, and... it, it basically is, because there's only one, maybe two circles on the screen at the same time. Right. So, you know, it's it's from A to B, rather than from A, B, C, D to E, F, G, H, and <laughs> I. Right. Um, I think, because that, that's something that a lot of people try to advise. Um, it's like, oh, how, how can I... Yeah, I, I think that this is more of a broad um, advice that people give. Um, how can I get more consistent? Things like that. But a lot of people say to just uh, learn low AR, right? Um, mm -hmm. Or play low AR maps, play old maps. Um, I, I think really the reason for that is because those maps force you to get better at chunking patterns. And chunking, being better at chunking patterns will help you be more consistent, help you mind block less. Uh, pay more attention they, to patterns, things like that. Yeah, they they force you to have to know how you need to move and to have to know how to execute that movement. Because whereas, again, high approach rates, you just move A to B. You don't really care where C is because it's not on the screen yet. But aiming uh, low approach rate... The lower the approach rate, the harder it gets, even, because you're thinking about so much, and then you even have to execute on top of that. Um, right. There's a reason players like Ikoro are so good at tournaments, despite being easy players and not really have been, been participated in tournaments before. The, um, I, I, think it's, I think it's incredible. Ikoro went back and flashlighted... Um, joint struggle after not playing it for years and years and he went back and he set a flashlight fc on it as if it was nothing and that essentially means he's learned that map well enough so that he can execute and he knows how to execute and where to move and he has the hand-eye coordination and the ability to think ahead enough that he can just move his cursor where he wants to move it where he knows it should be going and that's that's why reading is so vital to be consistent is you need to know how to move your cursor to where you need it to go right i think there there's a lot of skills that get touched on and trained with those sorts of gimmicky low a r um maps that you you can't really focus on improving things like um chunking and and focus and things like that on higher a r maps mm -hmm. um arguably yeah. right but um being better at those skills does um play a big role in uh i guess just being more consistent in general so but yeah much agreed i i do want to take this question from parade or p-r-a-d-e who asked how do one colored skins work for mind block um i think that's really interesting because so far we've we've sort of talked more about um distinguishing colors and things like that but specifically for mind block um well i i, I have some thoughts on this but i sort of want to get your thoughts as well on let me look for a second okay to my uh skin overview oh 
What's a skin overview? My whoa well, is the the document that I have that shows all of my skins. Oh, the oh, last oh. time, the last time I played with a single color skin was um twentieth of September, twenty fifteen. Oh my god! Wow. So I'm not. I'm not really the right person to answer this question, simply because I have always historically shied away from one color skins because of reading purposes, right? Because, um, you know, if it's one color skin, you can't really differentiate between the last note of a combo and the first note of the next combo. And, and that's good sometimes where maybe there's a square that you would see if it was um all the same combo color but because it's not the same combo color you see it as maybe seven eight one two and there's two separate little bits of that so yeah it can have an effect it it definitely um you know changes how you read things and that's not really something that i've ever needed if if you know what i mean yeah, I think if if you're reading and like ability to process patterns in your own way is good enough, then it's not really a requirement. But I, I definitely know that there's some people that are like, um, it, it's very challenging for them to break down, say, a square, for example, into like two separate bits. Like they see one, two, three, four, and it's like very hard to break away from what is shown on the screen. Um, in those situations is I think where I would really recommend using a skin with no colors, no numbers, no follow points, or really, really no visual guide. Um, the value in that is that you can basically create your own you know, follow points and, and trunks, for example. You can really break down the pattern however you want. It doesn't have to be um, a square, right? I, I think we've, we've sort of used that example a lot already, but... Um, Point is, squares are the ultimate mind block recycle. Right. That is true. Um, there's a reason there's so many square practice maps uploaded, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I think that is the biggest value that you could get out of a single colored skin is creating your own combo colors and groupings of objects rather than just using the one that the map gives you. So, but um. Again, I think once you develop that skill of chunking the patterns or grouping the patterns into digestible sections, um, then I think it can be done with any skin. It doesn't have to have only mm. one color. Um, it can be the default skin, for example, that has very vibrant colors. Um, it, it's more of a reading method. Um, and once you're able to read in a certain way, then you don't need a certain skin to be able to read that way. So Yeah, and I mean... I, I I did see it said that um, different color skins make chunking easier. I mean, the same color skin can make chunking easier using that example of the 7812 square with different combo colors. You can still kind of read that as 781 and then 23 whatever next. Right. As as long as you know, or, or as long as your reading is good enough about doing that, you can still... Uh, execute, I suppose. Afuni asked, do you think changing MP3 can help with mind block, like a mental reset? Um, uh, I, I don't think, think so. I disagree. Um, I, I think sometimes you attach the, cert the specific patterns to a certain part of the song. Um, and in, in that sense, like, the song cues your memory for how a certain pattern goes. Um, if that makes sense like you um and because I, I i do think that a key part of mind block is relying on memory um i think is like a, a very um core element of what defines mind block and having like associating the pattern with the song that's playing can cue that memory and and have you remember um the pattern in a certain way but when you change that mp3 to a different song you don't have that memory cue and it can sometimes have you read the pattern in a brand new way again. So, um, yeah, it, it is something you can experiment with. It's 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 um, not something that I would say you should stray away from. Like I said, I think part of the value of this game is that you can play however you want. Um, so, 
yeah, go for it. I, I, I do think it has some value in that regard. Um, but you know, whatever works for you. Um, there was another question. Oh yeah. So from Nada, uh, N A D A, who asks, has anything outside OSU helped your way of reading map patterns better? Um, anything outside of OSU? I wouldn't say so. It, no, it's it's that's not really a um a thing that I've ever thought about. I th I think all of the all of the information um related to reading in Osu will be related to reading in Osu, I guess. I'll have picked it up from playing Osu. Right. I think some of my like core understanding of reading in Osu ties to um, reading a language, and that that's an analogy that I remember mm. using in OC PhD, um, like, and it it was more to illustrate the idea of, um, being able to read simple pattern or simple sentences in a language before trying to tackle more complex sentences. Um, I guess so, yeah. But really, I think a parallel is like, um, and I, I use this parallel for talking about understanding how to read high AR basically where let's say like trying to learn to read a new language more quickly that has like a different alphabet like russian for example compared to english if you're trying mm -hmm. to learn russian um getting used to the individual sounds of each letter um will and like being more automatic in processing um letters and their associated sounds and then recognizing entire words and things like that is being able to look at something and have so much practice with it that you understand it instantly. Um, like you don't, don't even yeah. need to think about it. And to, to this effect, um, assuming that those of you listening to this are native English speakers, like when you look at, uh, or not, not native, but um, fluent enough to understand. But if you, like you can just look at a word in whatever, in, in a language that you're comfortable with and yeah. you, just, you just understand it. Like you, your you brain can, has read it before you even think you've read it. Right, like you can't even not understand the word if you wanted to right mm -hmm. um and it, it's just so automatic it's just constant constant practice throughout your life and that co concept is very relatable to osu in some senses like having so much practice playing something the right way um and like processing a pattern in a certain way every time you see a square instantly you break it down into like a one two and then another one two or instantly you read it as like a one two three and then the fourth note separately uh things like that if you practice that over and over um it'll become much more automatic i think that sort of analogy it's less about like learning to read another language will help you reading osu but understanding where like the ideas are similar is um i think the really valuable. transferable skills right right so yeah hopefully that answered your question um yeah, I don't know. Do you have any uh, last thoughts? I think now might be a good time to start wrapping up. But this won't be the last time we hear from you, right? Hopefully you'll be here on Friday as well. Um, If I'm free, and I should be, I don't think I'll have any tournaments at that point. Oh, right. Hopefully. Um, But yeah, I mean, I mean, even aside from that, this is this is not our last goodbye. Um, you can find you. Oh, absolutely not. Um. I'm sure you you'll have a couple lecture halls planned in the near future. But aside from that, I know you stream pretty often. Uh, I think your Twitch name is just Bubbleman, right? It is indeed. Right, Twitch.tv slash Bubbleman. I'd be happy to come back for other subsequent weeks and topics, as always. Right, let's go. Yeah, thank you again so much for um for doing this. Um, it's always always nice to have such valuable insights and i think this this talk hopefully has brought yeah a lot of insight to those listening so um thanks again everyone for tuning in um those of you listening on youtube or spotify uh if you guys want to get directly involved the best thing you can do is join our discord server um yeah that's where you can talk to us in live chat things like that um stay up to date um uh other than that great way to support us is to just share the content with anyone you think might enjoy it um that helps a lot more than you might think um 
doing the typical algorithm friendly activities, liking and subscribing and commenting and all that good stuff on YouTube. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, our next interview will be tomorrow at probably around 15 <laughs> Question mark? UTC. Um, so yeah, but look out for that. It'll be sometime. Um, you can keep up to date with a Discord announcement um, or s something of a similar effect. But um, yeah, definitely also check out the other interviews. Uh, yesterday, GN did an interview on MindBlock as well. That's up on our YouTube channel. So definitely, if you're listening to this, then you can go check that out. Um, also on Spotify, right? But um, with that, thank you again for listening. Thank you, Bubbleman, for joining. And see you guys next time. Oh, it was a pleasure. Yep. Bye. Bye.